بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome to our talk session, and I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think that's going to happen in the next 65 years? What do you think is going to happen in the next 65 seconds? None of us know because there's no guarantee. One thing is guaranteed is that every single one of us is going to face death. And that's what our topic is going to be about today. So here I have with me brother Lofi. Assalamu alaikum my brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah brother. It's been a while since we've been together. Alhamdulillah. Well, good to see you. So brother, can you tell us the journey that describes between death and the hereafter. What, what happens in that journey? Mm. That's a quite long journey. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallillahum wa barik ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. It's a very uh, big question to be honest with you because there are four lives in our existence. How many lives? Four, four lives. Number one, life of the womb. When you are, huh? when your mother is pregnant with you, mm -hmm. that's a life. Nine months mm -hmm. developing inside the, the, the womb of your mom. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that is the shortest life. Once you come out from the womb of your mom, you come to the second life. And it's life of the dunya, hayatul dunya. And it is the second shortest. Generally speaking, it is the second shortest life. Right. You might live one day and die. A few hours, years, hundred years. Allahu ta'ala alam. That's the second one. The third one, life of al-barzakh, al-hayatul barzakhiya. Life of the grave. When you die, when you leave this dunya, you will go to a life called Al-Barzakh. It's completely disconnected from the physical dunya which we are living today. Uh -huh. Okay? After life of Al-Barzakh, there is the longest, the longest life. Life of Al-Barzakh is the second longest. Some people died at the time of Adam alayhi salam. Mm. And they have been in their al-barzakh for how long? Thousands of years, if not millions of years. Allah ta'ala alam how long was that? Sure. Okay? Life of al-barzakh is unknown. How long we're going to spend that? Just like it is unknown for you how long you're going to live in dunya. Mm -hmm. Or how long you're going to stay in the womb of your mom. Some die, some make it, some don't make it. Some premature, some later after nine months, a bit later. So this knowledge is restricted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah. So life of al-barzakh can be very long, as long as thousands of years, millions of years, billions of years, Allah ta'ala alam. Allah ta'ala alam. And then the fourth life is al-hayatul abadiyya, al-khulud bila maut, eternity, everlasting life. And this life is the life of the hereafter. And it can be in only one of these two places. There is no third. Either in the Jannah of Allah or in the Jahannam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'adhan Allahu wa iyyakum minha. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. These are four lives. Now alhamdulillah, we've come out from the wombs of our mothers. We are into dunya now. But if you or I die or any human being dies, what happens to our bodies, our physicality, and what happens to our ruh, our spirit, our soul? Okay? The hadith I am going to narrate to you today, insha'Allah ta'ala, is a knowledge from the heaven. It is the knowledge which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Muhammad sallallahu It's accurate. Mm -hmm. We don't go to fortune tellers to tell us what happens after death. We don't go to magicians 
we don't go to um, awliya, like people name them or whatever it is, but we go back to the Quran of Allah and to the Sunnah of Rasulullah yeah. If it's not in the Quran, then it must be in the Sunnah. It must be in the Sunnah. Walillahi alhamd. Now, what happens after we die? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran Karim, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul mawt. Everyone must taste death. And everyone tries their best to flee away from death. Quran affirms that. Allah says, Qul inna al-mawt al-ladhi tafirruna minhu fa'innahu mulaqikum. Tell them, O Muhammad, death which you are trying to run away from will certainly come to meet you. ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون. Once you die, you will be sent back to the knower of the seen and the unseen, so that he will let you know or judge you for that which you used to do before you died. We agree. We all die. The only certain thing that everyone will have in this dunya is death. Nothing else is guaranteed for you. No one guarantees that you will be married. You will have children. Or you will have the job that you are studying for maybe years in university. It's not 100%. The only 100% thing is you will die. And no one promises you that you will die as a Muslim or as a kafir. That's the thing. It's ikhtibar. It's a test from Allah. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah Al-Mulk, Surah Tabarq? خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Glory be to the one who has all the kingdoms in his control, in his hands. وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ And he's capable of doing anything. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمُ أَيُّكُمُ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا قراءة ورش عن نافع He's the one who created death and life so that he tests you and he sees who does best amongst you. Not who does more, who does best. Well, quality, not quantity. Mm -hmm. So it is Allah who created death and what? Life. Mm -hmm. So he would test us. And here we are, every single minute of our lifetime is a test from Allah. It's a test, subhanAllah. How do you spend that minute? Disobeying him or obeying him? Mm -hmm. This goes back to you. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to what happens after we die. Al-Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, he reported in his Musnad and the hadith is classified as sound by Imam Al-Albani rahimahullah as well as Imam Al-Qurtubi mentioned in his book at tadkira that this hadith is sound, authentic. Alhamdulillah. And by the way, this is one of maybe if not the only hadith that speaks in details about al-barzakh, what happens to you after you die. I.e. the only authentic hadith, let me be more specific. There is very little few ahadith speak about al-barzakh that are authentic. There is a lot of ahadith that speak about what happens in life of the grave, people of the grave, they visit one another, they see one another, they are aware of what's going on outside, good news from outside come to them when someone dies and joins them. All of these ahadith, some of them mentioned in the book of Ruh ibn Qayyim, and the book of Al-Ghazali, Imam Al-Ghazali, Rahimahumullah, most of these ahadith are very weak. Not weak, extremely weak. But some ulama, because there's many narrations, they take some understanding from this ahadith and try to implement it and say that it could be right. But we're here to go for that which is purely authentic. Sure. And that's the hadith, walillahi alhamd, that describes that. Uh, the journey of our ruh, our spirit, after it is taken by the angel of death, uh, at that death time. Allah says in Surah Al-Sajdah, 
قل يتوفاكم ملك الموت الذي وكل بكم ثم إلى ربكم ترجعون tell them oh Muhammad the angel of death ملك الموت he's the one responsible for taking your lives away from you once that happens you will be sent back to your lord you will be sent back to your lord سبحانه وتعالى this tells you as soon as you die your minor day of judgment what begins بس دعوا لما دي سيء القيامة الصغرى والقيامة الكبرى دي ستو قيامات two day of judgment متفوركلي yeah because the day of judgment is a day of judgment the day when everybody will be resurrected and Allah will judge everyone but the minor judgment or day of judgment is death what happens after death منكر النكير كوشنيني and you will hear what you will hear okay what happens your grave can be a garden from the gardens of Jannah or a hole from the holes of what? Jahannam. So this is minor, minor hereafter or day of judgment. And the major one is when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of, on the day of al-taghabun ikhwat al-iman islam Now, if a person dies, this is what happens. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa hadith reported by Al-Bara ibn Azib qal. خرجنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في جنازة رجل من الأنصار فانتهينا إلى القبر ولما يلحد So this hadith is telling us that the Sahaba went out with the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم for a funeral to the graveyard a person from Al-Ansar, from Medina, died. And they went to bury him to the gra- in the graveyard. When they came to his grave, it was not digged yet. It wasn't dug yet. Okay? So what did the Prophet ﷺ do? فَجَلَسَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَجَلَسْنَا حَوْلَهُ He sat down وسلم, there, and all the Sahaba sat around him. This must be something very serious he's about to teach them, وسلم. Imagine the graveyard, often it is very quiet, speechless. They're carrying a dead person. They're about to bury him. The Prophet sat down. The Sahaba around him, they know their master is about to teach them something that is part of the unseen. They never knew before. He's going to reveal it to them. What happens to this person which you can't see once he's put inside, except, except him and the angels of Allah. So they sat down, listening carefully. The hadith is very long, as you see. It's like two pages long. I managed to put it in one page. So I don't want, I want to mention every word, so I don't want to miss anything, sure. inshallah ta'ala. And I'm going to try and break it down uh, as easily as I can so that everyone will understand. So they sat down around him. As if there were birds above our heads. It means very quiet. Very quiet. There's no sound. Because if birds are on top of you, it means there is safety. So it was very quiet. They were listening carefully to what he is about to tell them. وَفِي يَدِهِ عود. He had a stick, like a branch of a tree or something. يَنْكُتُ فِي الْأَرْضِ He was huh, doing this to the ground with a stick. You know sometimes your teacher when he's looking at you and he has a pen and he's going hmm. like that. He's thinking and he's... he's Sending you a sign yeah. that I'm going to give you some information maybe you never knew before. I'm going to teach you something that will be a principle for the rest of your life. So this is the sign he was giving to the Sahaba when he was doing that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we are studying this. You can stop me anytime sure, to, sure. No to uh, explain sure. more inshallah ta'ala. فَرَفَعَ رَأْسَهُ فَقَالْ His head was on the ground. And then what did he do sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He lifted his head and he spoke to them. Ya Allah. He's about to teach them. What did he say? مرتين أو ثلاثا. He said to them, ask Allah to protect you from the punishment of the grave. He repeated it thrice, three times. Very serious. Ask Allah to protect you from the punishment of the grave. When the Prophet ﷺ repeats something thrice, it means it is extremely important. Right. When we need to take it serious, when we listen to this authentic hadith of our Prophet And at the end of the hadith, I'm going to tell you the best dua for 
uh, for this, inshallah ta'ala. Sure. And then he went on to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ثُمَّ قَالْ إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ الْمُؤْمِنْ إِذَا كَانَ فِي انْقِطَاعٍ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَإِقْبَالٍ مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ When a believer, a mu'min, not a Muslim, because every believer is a Muslim, but not every Muslim is a believer. A believer, a mu'min, is a Muslim who practices Islam. Right. A believer is a Muslim who practices Islam. But a Muslim is anyone who worships Allah, who believes in Allah and His oneness, and believes in His messengers. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, someone who surrenders and submits to Allah. But lots of Muslims don't pray five times a day. Lots of Muslims don't fast Ramadan. Lots of Muslims don't go to Hajj while they have every mean to go to Hajj. Lots of Muslims are so disrespectful to their parents. Can we call them believers? No, and we have proof for that. A group of Bedouins came to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam in Medina and they said to him, the ayah says, قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولما يدخل الإيمان في قلوبكم وإن تطيعوا الله ورسوله لا يلدكم من أعمالكم شيئا إن الله غفور رحيم الله مغفر لنا ورحمنا الأعراب a group of Bedouins came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in Medina and they said we have believed all the messenger of Allah Allah revealed to Muhammad this ayah tell them that you have not believed yet but you have submitted and surrendered embraced Islam you have what? Embraced Islam. And if you obey Allah and His Messenger, at that time you will be true believers. At that time, nothing will be missing from your rewards. Indeed, Allah is all forgiving, all merciful. I'll give you an example. You're giving da'wah to a non-Muslim on the street. You're explaining to him the main concept of Islam and that's the oneness of Allah. Allah is one and He should be worshipped alone. And there is no other deities worthy of worship save Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad is his messenger. That's the main message you preach when, when you're giving da'wah, right? Mm -hmm. Tawheed of Allah. But are you going to talk to him about the angels, the day of judgment, al-barzakh, the qadr, khayrihi wa sharrihi, to believe in the books and this and that, when you're giving da'wah literally the first time? No. You, first, you focus on the first pillar of iman, what it means to believe in Allah, my friend. Mm -hmm. I give you da'wah to tawheed. And then you focus on what? The fourth pillar of iman, which is what? To believe in the messengers of Allah, Adam to Muhammad alayhi wasalam. Once he's happy with that, and he accepts Allah as his only God, and all the prophets of Allah, including Muhammad as the last one, at that time he's what? He's a Muslim. He's just yeah. submitted to Islam. Sure. He's just surrendered to Islam. Can we call him a full package believer? No, he will only be a full package believer if what? If he believes and understands all the six pillars of Iman, the six articles of faith, including their branches. Sure. He believes in the hereafter and what happens in the hereafter, the scale, the sirat, jannah, jahannam, the qadr khairihi wa sharrihi, the books, the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, Suhuf, Ibrahim, wa Musa, the Quran, the Kareem. He believes in Mikael, in Israfil, in Jibra'il, in Malik, in Ridwan. He believes in the angels of Allah, the way we're meant to believe in them. At that time, when he develops his faith, his faith automatically will make him obedient to Allah. Because you cannot be faithful and not practicing. Sure. Yeah. So that's the difference. So he says, In al abd al mu'min, when a believing person, okay, but if they tama'a, if taraqa, wa if taraqa tama'a, Islam and Iman, when they are not together, they can mean the same thing. Uh huh. But when they are together, when you put Iman and Islam together, they don't mean the same thing. See where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. So you can say, he's a Muslim. He's a believer. It's okay. But when you put them together, Islam and Iman, linguistically and Islamically, they mean two different things. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. So, in al abd al mu'min idha kana fi inqita'i min al dunya wa iqbalin min al akhira. When a believing Muslim, he's about to leave this dunya and heading towards the hereafter, i.e., when he's about to die. Okay? You're leaving this dunya and heading towards the hereafter. نزل إليه ملائكة من السماء بيض الوجوه كأن وجوههم الشمس. Angels from the sky will come down for him with very bright faces, nur upon nur, light upon light. The brightness in their faces like the brightness of the sun, as the hadith says. 
ma'ahum kafanun min akfani al-jannah they will have shroud they will have a shroud you know the shroud that you wrap the dead in sure. they will have a shroud from the shrouds of jannah this is not a normally a normal piece of cloth huh? that you shroud our dead with in this dunya this is a jannah one okay wa hanutun min hanut al-jannah nice perfume from the perfumes of jannah misk okay حَتَّى يَجْلِسُوا مِنْهُمَ الدَّلْبَصَرُ And they will stay away from him the distance of what, the, what his eyesight can reach. See, if there is a plain, featureless land, you see how far your sight can stretch or reach? That's the distance between that person dying and those angels welcoming him with that special shroud and misk coming down from Jannah. They'll wait. It's not their job to take his life away. Someone else as we'll find out. Right. right. And then the angel of death will come. Peace be upon him. The angel of death, he will sit right next to his head, the person who's about to die. Uh -huh. When he speaks to it at that time, the person is in Sakarat al Maut, the days of that death. Allah says, Wajaat Sakarat al Maut bil Haq. The days of death came with the truth. Death came to you, the truth. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing the angels. There is no way you can go back to dunya. You know, in Surah Al Qiyam, Allah says, Kalla ida balagat al Tarakiya wa qila man raq wa dhanna annahu al Firaq wa tafat al Saku bil Saku ila rabbika yawma idin al Masak. Never. When Taraqi comes, when death reaches your throat, i.e. when the angel of death is taking what? Your soul, your spirit, it comes up from your feet all the way up here to your throat and it comes from your mouth. Mm. The people around this person dying, whether doctors or family members, they're trying to save his life. Is there a Raqi? Is there a doctor? Is there a doctor to save this person's life? And the person dying, He's certain that he's leaving them. Why he's certain? Because he's seen the angel of death. There's no way you can go back. No way. You, can, you, you can't. That's it. They put him together. That's it. He's dead. After that, Allah says, to your Lord, your direction will be. The judgment of Allah. The minor judgment begins from that moment. Allah al-Iman wa Islam. Wallahi, we're not far away from our deaths. It's a matter of time, as we mentioned last time in the khutbah. Oh. This time can be as long as years, as long as weeks or months or minutes or hours. Allah Ta'ala alam. Sure. Let's continue, inshaAllah Ta'ala. Can I just quickly ask you yes. a question? So, will this be the case for every Muslim? You know, you <coughs> talked about the shroud. Will it be the same procedure for every Muslim? Every righteous person. Right. Or let's say every Muslim who worships. Let's be more specific. We don't want to be so precise sure, again. Sure. Every Muslim who worshipped Allah alone and followed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we don't have to say righteous and pious and imam and this and that. We say every Muslim who worshipped Allah alone mm -hmm. and believed in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and followed him. Thank you. That's enough to know. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Now, uh, so what happens? So the angel of death, he says to, to the ruh, to the spirit of this person who is literally dying. Oh, pure good spirit or soul, come out. Come out. He addresses it in a very soft manner. Come out to the forgiveness of Allah and the pleasure of Allah. Don't have to worry. Allah says in Quran, Ya ayyatuha nafsu al mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiya fadkhuli fi ibadi wa dkhuli jannati. At the end of Surah Al-Fajr, Allah says, O pure soul, O relaxed soul, soul with tranquility, soul with iman and tawheed and sunnah. Huh? Go back to your Lord, pleased and pleased again and again. Mm -hmm. Join my servants who have already joined, uh, who have already joined the, the pleasures of Allah and the gardens of Allah. And enter my Jannah. And enter my Jannah. 
May Allah make us from them. Amin. Ya Rabbi. Amin. With this ayat, we read them often, but do we really ponder on them? Mm. Allah is speaking to us about this. <sighs> Allah Mustaan. Now, so he says, come out to the forgiveness and to the pleasure of Allah. قال فتخرج تسيل كما تسيل القطرة من من في الساء السقاء فيأخذها فإذا أخذها لم يدعوها في يده طرفة عين. So what happens when he speaks to it to come out? It will come out very smoothly and easily. You see when you have you know skin water where people used to keep water in the olden times. Uh -huh. You see when you finish that when 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 you pour all the water and the last few drops. You see how easily they flow from that water skin. Yeah, very smooth and easily. Rahma from Allah. Okay, it will come out peacefully like that. Okay, and then he will grab. He will grab it, Malik al-Maut. At that time, you are officially announced dead. You bring the best doctors of the entire universe. They will not be able to give you one minute huh, extension for your life. One minute. They will fail to do that. Allahu Akbar. So, فَيَأْخُذَهَا He will grab it. فَإِذْ As soon as Malik al-Maut, his duty is done, he is taking the spirit out of the body, what happens? Those angels who were as far as your sight could reach were waiting for you patiently. They wanted to welcome you. They have a shroud from Jannah, perfume, fragrance from Jannah. They want to honor you. You are not any human being. You are someone who served Allah alone and followed his messengers and you died in that way. So you deserve this welcome. You deserve this welcome. So what do they do? لا يدعوها في يده طرفة عين not even a blink of eye time, it will remain in the hands of what? Of the angel of death. That's it. Your job was to take it out. We do the rest. This soul is about to be honored. They will seize it away from him. Okay? Okay? They would put it in that nice shroud and they would perfume it with that tayyib, with that misk. And the smell and the fragrance that will come out of that better than any fragrance or smell you can have in this dunya, as the hadith says. Sure. Smell it from far away. قَالَ فَيَسْعَدُونَ بِهَا فَلَا يَمُرُّونَ يَعْنِي بِهَا عَلَى مَلَئٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ إِلَّا قَالُوا مَا هَذَا الرُّوحُ ما هذا الروح الطيب فيقولون فلان ابن فلان بأحسن أسمائه التي كانوا يسمونه بها في الدنيا and then the angels will ascend will go up to the heavens with it and they pass through no assembly of angels because the angels dwell in where in the hell in, in the skies in the heavens yeah so they will keep ascending going up to the heaven حتى ينتهوا بها إلى السماء الدنيا فيستفتحون له فيفتح لهم فيشيعه من كل سماء مقربوها إلى السماء التي تليها حتى ينتهى به إلى السماء السابعة. So he will keep ascending, huh? and then when they come to the first heaven, they will seek permission to enter, and then the gatekeepers of the heavens, the angels, will open and they will allow them to keep ascending and they ascend second heaven, third, fourth, fifth, uh, sixth, seventh heaven and that's the highest. Uh -huh. Above it is the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Above it is the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, until it reaches there, what happens? فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya Allah, اُكْتُبُوا كِتَابَ عَبْدِ فِي عِلِّيِّينَ Write the book of my servant in the highest, in the highest status. This is Allah granting you what? Your everlasting happiness and joy in Jannah. That's it. You are from the people of عِلِّيِّينَ. Allahu Akbar. وَأَعِيدُوهُ إلى الأرض فإني منها خلقتهم وفيها أعيدهم ومنها أخرجهم تارة أخرى. Take him back to earth. 
for indeed from it I created them. Allah created us from clay, not the clay of the earth. Uh huh. وَفِيهَا أُعِيدُهُمْ And I will resurrect them there. Okay? Allah will, will resurrect you there, subhanAllah. You will go back to it, and then you will resurrect. Uh -huh. وَمِنْهَا أُخْرِجُهُمْ You will resurrect from earth, and then you go to the judgment of Allah after resurrection. قَالْ He said, فَتُعَادُ رُوحُهُ فِي جَسَدِهِ His spirit or his soul will be restored in his body. Now, when you die, you see that journey of the angels ascending yeah. with you to the seven heavens? What are your family doing with your body? Your body is useless. If they lift your head and they let it go down, it's useless. Oh. After what? After a few hours, if you don't wash it and keep it someone a bit cool, you might what? Decompose. Smell not nice. People oh. will run away from you. Right. This very body, which you used to Huh? Perfume with Chanel, whatever, all these perfumes. This face which you used to put lots of makeup, which was in an unlawful manner. Uh -huh. This body which you used to clothe and dress with very branded clothes. And you did every single way, whether haram or halal, to feed your body, to satisfy your body, to feel the urge of your desires for your body. After you die, it's nothing, it's useless. It will smell. You feed your body, you feed your physicality, your physical appearance, your belly, your mind. But do you really feed your spirit, your ruh? Do you know how to feed your spirit and your ruh? You feed it with iman, love for Allah, for his deen, for his messenger. That's how people tend to focus on feeding their bellies and their bodies and their minds with dunya education. That's okay, you have limitations for everything. But people exaggerate. People oh. fight each other. People envy each other. For what? For fattening themselves with these worldly gains and riches. But once they die, after a day or two, your beloved people can't be next to you if they don't do the right steps which Sunnah taught us. Uh -huh. Washing you, shrouding you, perfuming you, burying you as quickly as possible as the Sunnah says. So you're useless. Oh. You spend hours in the gym, hours uh, in the swimming pool. Uh huh. Did this muscles help you in any way? We're not saying it's not good. It is good. But do not give it priority over your faith, sure. over your ruh, over your spirit. It's a good point that you made because one of the things I was going to mention that no matter how fit and healthy you are, you know, when your time is written, your time is written. Or how you beautiful know, you how, are. How many of us have said, oh, we knew this young person that passed away or somebody who used to go to the gym, or a football player. And it, you're right, it doesn't matter what you feed. If, if your time is now, literally in the next 20 seconds, it'll be gone. And yes. these are things that if we don't feed ourselves, our knowledge, it doesn't sink in. It'll be too late by then, right? Allah must have, yeah. You know? Allah must have. So please, it is always good. Allah, Jameel, you hibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. It is always good to keep fit, to keep looking good presentable, hygienic, but give everything its right. No exaggerations. Yeah. No exaggeration. No israf. Allah says, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا Eat and drink and do not waste. And do not waste. As well as, a, as, well as when it comes to your clothes, to your house, to your, the car you drive. Do not waste. Uh -huh. Just be humble. Be humble, inshallah. So this is what happened. So we stopped where? Yeah, so his ruh will be restored to his body. So what happened to your body when you die? The angels are having this journey with your spirit. And your family are having another journey with your body. Number one, what do they do? The sunnah is you confirm your death. But you died. They close your eyes. They cover you. Okay? They make dua for you. They arrange funeral arrangements. Okay? As soon as that is confirmed, your death is confirmed, is announced to your closed ones. Okay? What do they do? They take you to wash you. Mm -hmm. They go and wash you. Ghasl. They wash you. After they wash you, they'll perfume you. If it's a woman, then 
sisters will wash her. If it's a man, brothers will, will wash him, i.e. trustworthy ones. Okay? So after they wash you, they will shroud you. After they shroud you, they will take you to the masjid. To do what? To pray for you. Uh -huh. To pray for you, please, brothers. Do not be from those who do not go to the masjid except in your shroud. Uh -huh. Wallahi is a disaster. Wallahi ladhi la ilaha illahu. If you meet Allah while having not prayed five times a day, it's a problem. Al-ahadu alladhi baynana wa baynahum as-salat faman tarakaha faqad kafr. Your Rasul, which you love and which you follow, وسلم, he said, the difference between us and them, the non-Muslims, is Salat. Whoever abandons their Salat, they have disbelieved. I am not saying the brothers out there who don't pray five times a day are kafir, but I am saying it is an action of kufr. It is what? An action of kufr. Whether you want to understand it as minor, kufr or major, that's a different topic. But it is indeed kufr and it is enough for us as a sin. Or the major or minor. Uh -huh. You don't want to meet Allah while having not prayed. The people of Jannah ask the people of Jahannam. Allah telling us this in Surah Muddathir. قَالُوا مَا سَلَفَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ The people of Jannah ask the people of Jahannam. What caused you to be in Saqar? Saqar is one of the worst parts of Jahannam. What caused you to be in Jahannam? The people of Jahannam replied, they said, we were not amongst those who used to pray. Ya akhi, taqi Allah fi nafsik. Pray five times a day. Fight yourself. There is no excuse, I have school, I have work. Even if you had school, even if you miss salat, make it up the moment you get home. Even if you got home very late at midnight. Pray. Pray. Don't sleep while missing a prayer of the day. Pray. That's not an excuse. Inshallah Ta'ala, we're not expecting you to pray five times a day in order the moment you repent to Allah. There will be drops, ups and downs here and there. But start. Allah wants to see you trying your best. Practice. Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Allah wishes to offer you repentance. Wa yuridu alladheena yatabi'una shahawati an tamilu maylan azeema. And those who follow haram desires wish that you are misguided with them in a great way. While Allah wishes for you to come to Him, to repent to Him. Repent to Allah and bit by bit you will pray on time, inshaAllah ta'ala. Don't allow shaitan to drill your head with a uh, root in your head that if I don't pray on time, it means I'm munafiq, I'm a hypocrite. No, you're not. Muslim builds his faith gradually, bit by bit, you get there. Inna ma'al usri yusran. After hardship comes ease. Bit by bit, inshaAllah ta'ala. What matters start to pray and don't miss a prayer a day. Pray five prayers, inshallah ta'ala. Because, as I mentioned, you don't want to go to the masjid. Oh. Yeah. Huh? The first time to your masjid in your shroud. So, so scary we know what happens. So we know what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going into details. Jannah, Jahannam, Adab al-Qabr. That's it. Allah al sure. May Allah guide us and everyone. So... After they shroud you, they take you to the, to, the, to the masjid, wherever they pray your janaza or janaza, both of them linguistically correct. Um, they will pray your janaza. Your janaza has no rukur, no sujood. All they say, Allahu Akbar, four takbirat. The first, Allahu Akbar, A'udhu Billahi Mishra Rajim, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Al-Fatiha. After Al-Fatiha, the second, Allahu Akbar, Salat Al-Ibrahimiyya, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. After that, Allahumma aghfir li hayyina wa mayyitina wa ghaibina wa shahidina wa kabirina wa sagheena. The dua, huh? the third Allah Takbir, you say the dua for the dead person there. You say the dua after the first, after the, uh, the fourth Takbir, you do what? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allah's al-maqbara, to the graveyard. To the graveyard. Be someone who is very kind and very loyal and very, and very helpful and useful for your community. Because you want as many people as possible to attend your, mm -hmm. your what? Genesis. Your funeral. Yeah. If it's more than 40 people witnessing your goodness, that's shafaha. That's some, a good sign that you will be from those who are successful in their grave. Do. So focus 
on your relationship with Allah as well as your relationship with the creation of Allah. Inshallah. So after they take you to the graveyard, your grave is prepared for you, they will put you in the grave. They make dua for you and they will leave. Anything remains with you? Nothing. Nothing. Your wealth and your family and your deeds will go with you to your graveyard, as, graveyard, as the hadith says. Two will leave and one will remain. Your family and what? And your wealth will leave. Okay. But your deeds, what I mean by your deeds, bad and good, not just good deeds, remember. Oh. Uh -huh. They will stay with you in your grave and they will decide your future in your, in your grave. Your mom, your dad, your wife, your husband, your sister, your daughter, your son. ما أغنى عني مالية هلك عني سلطانية. You will say if you were wicked, my wealth did not benefit me. My powers, my kingdom, what can it do to me? This is Quran saying this. Nothing. يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون. No wealth and no offsprings will be beneficial at that moment. Allahu Akbar. Except your good deeds. Except what? Good deeds. Yes, sure. So, um, and then what happened? Your body will be restored. Uh, your spirit will be restored to your body. Okay? And then what happens? The hadith says, فَيَأْتِيهِ مَلَكًا فَيُجْلِسَانِهِ فَيَقُولَانِ لَهِ Two angels will come to you. As soon as you're put in your grave, people bury you and they leave. What happens? Two angels will come to you. And these angels are who? Munkar and Nakir. Munkar and Nakir. They will come to you and they will say, Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? Fayaqul, Rabbi Allah. My Lord is Allah. You passed one. Fayaqulan, they will ask again, Ma Dinuk, what is your religion? Fayaqul, Dini al Islam. My faith, my religion, my way of life is Islam. فَيَقُولَانِ لَهُ They will say to him again, مَا هَذَا الرَّجُلْ الَّذِي بُعِيثَ فِيكُمْ Who is this man who was sent amongst you? فَيَقُولُ هُوَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم He is indeed the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم فَيَقُولَانِ لَهُ They will give him glad tidings. Or they will say to him before the glad tidings, وَمَا عِلْمُكَ فَيَقُولْ قَرَأْتُ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ فَآمَنْتُ بِهِ وَصَدَّقْتُ فَيُنَادِ مُنَادِي What is your knowledge? What is your source of knowledge? He will say, I read the book of Allah, the Quran, and I believed in it. And I believe in every single verse. You see, أعوذ بالله, this day is a Muslim, I wouldn't call them Muslims, okay? But there is a group of people who claim to be Muslims, who talk about the reformation of what? Of the Qur'an. Have you heard of them? Mm. Reforming the Qur'an and, and modernizing the Qur'an and updating the Qur'an. A bit, a bit similar to like a Bible, a new version of it. No, I haven't heard of that. Oh, plenty of oh. movements. Oh. Those two liberal so-called Muslims. No. You're right. saying the Qur'an is not compatible with this era or this society? Right, okay. You're saying that Allah doesn't know and you know? You're saying that the Prophet is wrong and you're right? لَقَدْ كَفَرْتَ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكَ Indeed, you have disbelieved after you believed. If you truly say that and you insist on saying that without repenting to Allah, okay. you have committed a major action of kufr. If you die in that way, brother, no, no. You will never see the Jannah of Allah. May Allah guide you and guide us. Ameen. What is your source of knowledge? The book of Allah. Not huh? the reformed one or whatever the one they claim. No. Some of them they say, we move the verses where there is jihad. We move the verse where there is women wearing hijab. We move the verse where there is women rights. And we add something suitable and compatible. A'udhu billah. La'natullahi ala amthali ha'ula illam yatubu ila Allah. Hmm. 
Behind you something, brother. Yeah. It might bite you and you might die today. And <laughs> We're talking about this, right? I'm joking. I'll, I'll die just a very leave, nice way. Just leave it. I'm, I'm joking fine. about this. <laughs> no, no, it's um, okay. You will die, inshallah, in husn al-khatima like that. Yeah. Talking about death and remembering Allah. It's a good death, but sure. unexpected one. It's not what we do, wish do you for. Know what? Just on that note, I was going to say, one of, the, one of the key things us as Muslims can say proudly, you know, than any other person that speaks about their religion is that the Quran has not been changed since the day has been revealed yep. to this point. Sah. So when someone says we've changed this and changed that, you've completely, in my opinion, are an unbeliever because you don't believe what's been revealed. Mm -hmm. So I would say a Muslim person is one who believes in Allah and the Prophet peace upon him. And if you're not believing in Allah, I'm sorry, you're not Muslim. Yeah, and that's what Islam is all about. It's about submitting your will to Allah. Uh -huh. Not questioning Allah. Not questioning his messenger. Uh -huh. Questioning Allah is an action of disbelief. Sure. Unless you are asking Allah to help you find out something. Sure. But asking Allah, why are you like this? Or why did you do this, Allah? لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون Allah says in the Quran, he does not... No one can question him, and he questions everyone. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh. Don't question Allah. He made you, He designed you. Oh. He can take your sight, He can take your intellect that you spent all your money to, huh, to feed in whatever university. He can take it, seize it away from any time from you, and you become insane. Who would give you intellect once again? Scientist so and so, biologist so and so, huh? Prime Minister so and so, Wallahi they won't. They won't. It's a gift from Allah. Appreciate it and use it righteously. Oh. Allah honored the offsprings of Adam by giving them intellect. But the people who don't use their intellect righteously in the sight of Allah, uh -huh. they have the wrong purpose of life and they are misguided. Uh -huh. Let's continue in short time. So he will say, I read the book of Allah and I believed in it. Listen to what happens after he answers the three questions of Munkar and Nakir correctly. A caller will call from the heaven. And Sadaqa Abdi, my servant, has spoken the truth. That's Allah. Allah Jalla fi Ulah. He will call out in a way which befits his majesty and glory beyond our imagination. He will say, my servant has spoken the truth when he answered these three questions. My servant was a true Muslim, not a hypocrite. My servant was obedient. This is what it means. فَأَفْرِشُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ Allah will order the angel. Huh? Lay down for him, uh, what do you call that? A carpet from Jannah or uh, sheets from Jannah so he can relax in his grave. Okay? وَأَلْبِسُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ And dress him from the clothes of Jannah. That's an order from Allah to honor this servant of his. وَفْتَحُوا لَهُ بَابًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And open for him a door to Jannah. So he can see his, his house in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Let me, let me pause in here, brothers and sisters. I know this takes time, but you might listen to a hadith like that once or twice in your lifetime. If you are... Someone well, who I've, doesn't have I've, time and I've listened to yeah. it for the first time. This is a and maybe you're an eye opener. <laughs> yeah. I, I was saying earlier on yeah. that uh, you know, a lot of people think you know the angel of death comes and then you're on your grave, you have a long sleep and then you wake up, you have judgment and That's people. Not... It's 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 very. If if we knew that this hadith, all this happens, it gives you more iman. Like you know, it, you prepare yourself more. Yeah, preparation and yeah. scares you in a way. Yeah. Like, wow, I didn't know this happens. Because it's the good side we we're, we're reading. Yeah. This is for a practicing yeah, Muslim. Exactly. The rest of the hadith, another page and a half or a page, it talks the opposite of this. Mm. The one who's not practicing, specifically disbelievers and hypocrites, and that will sound really, really scary. Yeah. And it's real. Definitely. And it's justice more than anything and before anything else. 100%. Now, you might say, brother and sister in Islam, may Allah bless you, that everyone knows these three questions mm. and their answers. My Lord is God, Allah, my Prophet is Muhammad, and my religion is Islam. You ask a five-year-old uh, girl or uh, boy, Muslim boy or girl, they would be able to answer this question. What's, what's, what's more than that, you ask the worst creature that ever existed on earth. 
and in the heavens. And that's who? And that's Iblis, the Shaytan. If you ask him these three questions, does he know the answers or not? He knows them better than you and me. Oh, yeah. He knows better than you and me. <laughs> because he saw every prophet. Yeah. He saw Adam. He saw Nuh. He saw their message. He saw their manners. He saw their biographies. He, he saw everything. He knows. But the difference between you and him, you have what he doesn't have. You have faith in Allah. You don't have pride before Allah. You don't have arrogance. He believes in Allah. Shaytan, as you see him, he believes in Allah. Qala Rabbi, anzirni ila yawmi ba'athun. When Allah expelled him from Jannah, he said, uh, Oh my Lord. So he's, oh. he's, he's acknowledging that Allah is his Lord. Oh my Lord, extend my life all the way to the day when you resurrect them. So he knows and he believes in the oneness of Allah and in the greatness of Allah. But his kufr is a different type of kufr. There are five types of kufr, brothers and sisters, in Islam, if you don't mind mentioning this quickly. Sure, yeah. There is kufr of denial. Kufr huh? of denial, rejection. When you reject something Allah orders you to believe in, you reject the fact Allah exists, or you reject to believe in the angels, or one of the prophets, or one of the books of Allah, or anything from the six pillars of Iman and their branches. Yeah. Kufr of denial. The second type of kufr, and this is our topic, is the kufr of arrogance with acknowledgement. Oh. Kufr of arrogance with what? With acknowledgement. And that's the kufr Iblis fell in. My Lord, you created me from smokeless fire. And you created him from what? Clay. From clay. I am better than him. Oh. I am better than him. And he rebelled against what? Against Allah. Allah named Iblisa. In al kafiri oh. Kafir. Kafir. And promised him, promised him repeatedly in the Quran, Jahannam and every one of his followers. So the second one is the kufr of denial. Uh, first one, kufr of denial. Second one, kufr of arrogance and acknowledgement. The third one is very dangerous, kufr of doubtfulness. When you are not sure whether Muhammad is the final prophet, when you are not sure whether the angels exist, when you are not sure whether Allah is one, or Allah has a son, or that you doubt this shirkiyat and these beliefs, that is kufr. We, look, there is a slight difference between doubt and whispers from the shaitan. Right. Sometimes shaitan comes to you and tells you, do you really believe in Allah? Does Allah really exist? He tries to mess up oh. with your mind. Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajin, Amantu Billahi Rabban Ubli Islam Deenan, Ubi Muhammad Nabi Sallam. The Prophet taught us that these whispers will come to us. But what do you do? Don't surrender to them. Attack them by the dhikr of Allah. And when you say this dhikr, say it from the bottom of your heart. People just, it's like they spit this dhikr. Like without anything, without any iman coming out. And they, they don't see the fruit of it. Because you're just saying words, maybe you don't understand. Maybe you don't mean, you're just saying them for the sake of saying them. So, if you want them to really be effective, then mean them, understand them. They will be very effective. Shaitan will not have sabil over you. Oh. Will not have sabil over you. So kufr of doubtfulness, when you doubt the mightiness of Allah, or His oneness, or anything like that. That's the third one. And kufr of uh, aversion, or deviation, when you turn away completely from Islam. And kufr of nifaq, kufr of hypocrisy major hypocrisy when you use Islam while you are not while you are not a Muslim and you pretend to be what? Mm. Muslim that's out of topic but I thought uh, a benefit to benefit from so it falls under the, the yeah. same the arrogance yes, of shaitan of course yeah now shaitan he knows but his arrogance huh, expelled him from Islam expelled him from what? from Islam but Will he be able to answer these questions? Or one of his followers who takes the path of shaitan? Will he be able? Now, if you ask the critics of Islam, who is the God of Muslims, who is the Prophet of, of, of Muslims, they will tell you these three answers. Sure. But would they be able to answer them in their graves? No. Just because they knew them? No. In the grave is not about what you know. Learn this, brothers and sisters. Once you are in the grave, 
is not about physicality because knowledge that you store in your head you gained it through physicality you opened books you wrote you took notes you revised you in dunya you did that so it was stored in your mind do you understand mm -hmm. and then it became faith and so on and so forth but in al barzakh remember there is no physicality if there was physicality you would come up from your grave and walk and go back to your house and family but there isn't it's a spiritual way of life that is beyond our understanding that's why your body after what number of days or weeks what happens to it nothing yeah. for what ashes or whatever dust or whatever it is there is only your ruh in there your ruh so it's not about what you know it's about how you wear before going into that hole of the grave it's about your righteousness and your good deeds and bad deeds uh -huh. that's how it is it's like the day of judgment you can't say to allah allow me to pray allow me to give charity it's too late it's about what you did before you died so don't be deceived by the shaitan easy questions and you know some more than some liberal muslims what they do and they call them al-murji'a as long as you believe in allah as long as you are muslim and you announce that you're muslim and you believe in the prophecy of Muhammad وسلم, then no matter what you do, you will always be a Muslim and you will go to Jannah. This is one of the shaitan khutuwat, one of the steps of shaitan leading you to what? To disbelief. Just like there are actions which make you Muslim, there are other actions which make you no longer Muslim. For you to become Muslim, you have to surrender, obey, pray to Allah and follow his messengers. And there is other actions. If you do them, you're no longer a Muslim. Such as any type of the five kufr we mentioned. That will make you no longer a Muslim. Uh -huh. You mock the Prophet, you're no longer a Muslim. You mock Allah, you're no longer a Muslim. You, uh, you use hypocrisy against Islam and Muslims, you're no longer a Muslim. These are nullifiers of Islam. Uh -huh. So we've got to be very careful. Khair, inshallah ta'ala. Let's, let's go back to our hadith, okay? Sure. So the time is very restricted. Uh -huh. So we said that... Um, they will dress him from the clothes of Jannah and they will uh, open for him a door which he can see Jannah. Okay? And then what happens after that? The breeze of Jannah and the smell and the fragrance of Jannah will come to him in his grave. He can't enter Jannah yet because Jannah is only after the judgment on the day of judgment. Okay? Uh -huh. But he can see his position in Jannah. He can smell the breeze of Jannah. He can see, he can feel it, okay? And his grave will be expanding as far as his sight can reach. Ya Allah, you might think it's just a small hole, but the spiritual life is way beyond our understanding. As far as your sight can reach. Rawhun wa rayhan wa jannatu na'im. Allahu Akbar. Okay? And then what happens after that? Fayaqul abshir billadhi yasurruk. ويأتي سوري ويأتيه رجل حسن الوجه حسن الثياب طيب طيب الريح فيقول أبشر بالذي يسرك while he's enjoying himself in that massive place we call it a garden from the gardens of Jannah what happens a person will come to him a person will come to him and he will say to him he will he will, he will he will look very friendly okay he will look very friendly very handsome okay dressed in a very nice way he will tell him glad tidings for you good news for you okay this is your day which you were promised the start of your jannah the start of what your jannah begins here in your grave the person who is in the grave the dead i've been that to us, but oh, he's, he's, he's alive in Hayat al barzakhi obviously. He will say to him, Who are you? For your face is so beautiful. I don't know you. Where did you come from? Right? This person, he will say to him, I am your righteous deeds. I am your good deeds. I am your salat, your hajj, your obedience, your parents, your hygiene, your tawheed, your sunnah, your kindness to your neighbors, your, your, your good deeds that you did for Allah's sake and uh, according to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You made me, you formed me. Here I am, your company, the meaning. You're not alone. Subhanallah. 
and the hadith finishes here i.e. the first part of the hadith and then what does that person say in life of al-barzakh he says فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَقِمِ السَّاعَةِ the person in the grave will say oh my lord bring the hour of doom oh. bring the day of judgment why? حَتَّى أَرْجِعَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِي وَمَالِي so that I would go back to my family and my property. He knows he will meet his family in Jannah. Uh-huh. He knows what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for him in Jannah. His palaces, his uh, pleasures and joys. And he can't wait for Jannah. Uh-huh. He can't wait. He's asking Allah, well, Allah, bring the day of judgment. Hasten to bring it. And of course, Allah will not do that. Allah has an appointed time for, uh-huh. for everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala, jalla jalla. But he will be enjoying himself there. This is the first part of the hadith, brothers and sisters in Islam. May Allah make us from those. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. However, the second part of the hadith, I think, inshallah ta'ala, we will continue next time because it takes long. It talks about the opposite. Sure. The person who dies while he's a disbeliever, disobedient. What's his journey like when he dies? We will find out, inshallah ta'ala, inshallah. with Brother Shah and sure. we'll arrange for us a time, inshallah. Sure. Ta'ala. And again, this is the first part of the people that look forward um, to, to the journey. But what happens when it goes completely opposite? And this is something that is quite scary. I'm not actually sure I want to hear it, but you know, this I'm already looking forward to it in such a way that it's changed me in such a way that I, I didn't even know about this hadith. Um, it's so deep, so meaningful. Alhamdulillah, and uh, you know, it's uh, something that really, it's a long topic, but if you really think about it, really think about it, and I said right at the beginning, what guarantees have you got that you've got the next 65 seconds? You don't. The guarantee is, in the next 65 seconds, if you have, what are you going to do? And that's the thing, question yourself. Inshallah, we'll join you at our next session. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.